Hello, welcome back. This is John Buck with another video about discrete time linear systems. Uh, today I'm going to show you a very simple example of adding two, exam adding two signals. Again, adding signals is one of the basic operations we do. It's really straightforward, just point by point at each point in time you add the amplitudes. But early in the class I thought it would be helpful to break it down like this and show you an example of if some of you need uh, help or refreshment on how we add functions in general. There's nothing different from the way we added functions in math class except that it only exists at the discrete indices n. So let's uh, get the whiteboard up so we can see again today's topic, adding signals. Uh, and let's go up to this page. I already have uh, two sample signals drawn here. The x of n is one we've seen already in a few of these videos. And again, if you this, this video assumes you've seen the basic operations on signals video. If you haven't already seen that, uh, you should go uh, take a look at that one before and come back here. Now, but when we add two signals, what this looks like in terms of the equation is we might say the new signal y of n is going to be x of n plus v of n. So these two signals, we might call them our input. Uh, in fact, we'll, we'll get to block diagrams later, but maybe as a little preview, I'll show you as the semester goes on, we'll also have a, sort of a graphical language for this that will say, well, I could take two signals, x of n and v of n, put them through this adder box plus with a plus sign in a circle, and what comes out would be y of n. So we'll be doing more with that later, but these are two ways we might talk about, represent the idea of adding two signals. But the process is basically the same as what we saw with the other operations, which is just to go through one sample at a time, one value of n at a time, and plug into the equation for n. So we just substitute, say, n equals minus 2 everywhere. We'd say y, the amplitude at y, at minus 2 is the amplitude of x at minus 2 plus v at minus 2. Or if you like, you can say, I evaluate these functions, x and v, both at minus 2, add the values of the functions at those points, and that gives me the value of y of 2. So that would be equal to, uh, well, x at minus 2, I come over here as 0. v at minus 2, the amplitude is also 0. So that's kind of a boring point. y at minus 2 is equal to 0. I, uh, what am I going to do? Am I going to hop pages? I think I will. I'll go to the, the next page, and we can draw y of n up here one sample at a time. So we just said at minus 2, it's equal to 0. If I hop back to my previous page, and I can go on and say, well, y at minus 1 would be x at minus 1 plus v at minus 1. Which is equal to, well, let's see, x at minus 1 is now has a non zero amplitude. So I have 1 for x of minus 1. v at minus 1, though, is still 0. So the, the new signal y at time index minus 1 would be have an amplitude equal to positive 1. So we can go add that to our graph. Continuing, we'll do one more by hand. So y of 0 would be x at 0. Now that we're getting more practice, we can just go say, well, x at 0 would be equal to 2, plus v at 0 would be equal to 1. So I add those two together, and I say the new signal has amplitude 3. Oh, so it had a weird pen glitch there. Let's clean that up. So that would have amplitude 3. So if I come over here at time 0, I have amplitude 3. And we can continue this process the whole way through, one sample at a time, until we run out, out of non-zero samples, and then everything will be zero plus zero. So again, I'm going to encourage you, pause the video here, go do the rest of it yourself, and then come back, and, and you can check your answer against mine. I'll pause too, and then fill in my end. Okay, and we're back now. So again, I've, I've, I've shown, uh, here's, the, here's the work for the remaining points. At, one, at y equals 1, I have minus 1 plus 2, if, if we went back and looked on the previous page. So that's height 1. Then a minus 2 plus a minus 1 gives me minus 3 when n equals 2. A 1 plus 1 gives me 2 when n equals 3. When n equals 4, I get 0 plus 1 from the signals on the previous page and so on. And then everything from 5 and above will be 0. And also, I, I guess, to be complete, I should also say that uh, y of n equals 0 for n less than or equal to minus 2. So for everything outside the region shown, these two signals will be 0. Okay, so there's a simple example for you of adding two signals, uh, one of the basic operations again. 
and I uh, hope that cleared up any questions you might have. I'll talk to you next time.